Now let's look at problem number 13. I want you to go ahead and look at that in the book. You can pause if you want. I'm just going to go straight into it. Um, so she's flying her plane, flying this ultralight plane. I'm going to draw it just as like my standard little plane, not like an ultralight. Okay, there's the plane. It's Marsha's plane. She's flying to a town against a headwind. So she's got a certain plane speed, P, and the wind speed is W. Okay. Um, now, in the problem in the book, those were the two variables. And one of the things about 13, why it's in section B, is that it's a little different because those are still relevant quantities, but they're not actually the two unknowns. They actually tell you W. And one of the things about becoming a good problem solver is being able to sort of see one model where a certain pair of variables are the unknowns, and then being able to change to a situation where it's the same setups, the same physics, the same chemistry, or whatever, same economics, whatever, and, and yet you have two different variables. Okay, so now that's going to that's be a little twist. Um, and what does it say? It says that uh, that's the headwind is 15 kilometers per hour, and the time uh, with the headwind equals now 2 hours and 20 minutes. Really good idea to convert that to just hours. And if you really want to do it nicely, you convert it to um, a fraction, 7 thirds of an hour. Decimal's not such a bad idea, but fractions are, are kind of more elegant. Um, and then it says the time, well, let's see. When she returns it's the, in the same wind conditions, that's going to become a tailwind. It's going to help her. And these kinds of problems, usually one's going to be a headwind, one's going to be a tailwind, usually. Again, not something you can absolutely guarantee, I guess. And there it takes an hour and 24 minutes. That's 1.4. Or if we want it in fractions, 7 fifths of an hour. I guess I'll put hour here, too. OK. And what does it say? Find the airspeed. And we've already denoted that with a letter P. So that is one of the variables. OK, that's a variable that we want to solve for. It's an unknown. And the distance. Oh, yeah, they didn't tell us the distance, did they? OK, the distance traveled. This is a return trip. It's going from a certain place, maybe A, out to B, and then back again. And that's the that's the other unknown. And let's call that D. OK, so two approaches to this problem. One is to try and sort of set it up with a table and uh, set it up, kind of go directly to the algebra. But I really recommend to people, I've been saying this to people, that if you just don't know where to start, it might be because you're, you're, there's two complicated things here. One is the situation and, and the details of the, of the real situation, and the other is the unknowns and the algebra. And absolutely crucial, the, the first step for, for, I don't know how, I don't know how you do it without sort of doing this first step, is find the, figure out the unknowns. And then the question is, do you jump right into algebra, setting up algebraic equations with those unknowns? Or if you're feeling confused about it, a good, strategy to get yourself unconfused and to jumpstart the common sense part of your brain is just put in some numbers for those. It helps probably if they're somewhat reasonable numbers, which where you want to use a little common sense, but they don't you don't have to worry about I don't know what air speeds of planes very well or something like that. Let's just put in some some number. Well it's an ultralight plane. That help it it does help to, to know that. Although again it's not crucial. If you put in seven thousand kilometers per hour for the airspeed you'd still get an idea of what's going on. Um, but let's say ultralight planes probably don't move that fast. And in an hour, they probably don't go super, super fast. Let's just put in like 100. And again, this is not how, we're not saying, oh, that's the answer. I'm saying, what if? It's a what if thing. That is one of the, your most powerful tools. What if T was 100 kilometers per hour and D was equal to 50 kilometers? question marks, because we don't really know that, and it's just a guess. And what I like to do with this is, I like to say, if I knew that, what other quantities would I know? And in particular, I'd like to match those up and say, would that actually give me, in this situation with a 15 kilometer headwind and 100 kilometers per hour and going 50 kilometers, would that actually end up being 7 thirds of an hour? 
or not? Would it end up with the tailwind being seven-fifths of an hour? And just checking that with explicit numbers, you're going to be forced to write down essentially the same algebra that we're going to use in a minute with the letters and then, and then solve in a more complicated way. Okay? So it's kind of going backwards. It's saying instead of saying these are the knowns and these are the unknowns, it's saying, well, what if I did know those? What would that what would that do for these other quantities? What, what would make those other quantities? So that's of course where we have to bring in the, our our essential equation, which is distance equals rate times time. Okay. And so let's say I've got this this equation. What's the ground speed? Let's say with the headwind. In that situation, my handwriting is getting even worse. My the headwind, the ground speed. is um, 100 minus 15. And one of the things about this strategy, when you put in explicit numbers, don't skip any steps like this, because this is where you're going to see the pattern. If you just skip right down and, and write down 85, that's hiding the pattern of how you got that number. Make sure you write down the 100 minus 15, because that's going to be important for being able to plug in letters instead of numbers in a minute. Okay, But let's keep with the numbers for a second. Headwind, ground speed is 85. Just while we're on this page, tailwind, ground speed, that's where they add. It's 115. Okay? So I'll, I'll bring that back in a minute. Okay. Um, well, let, let me kind of mix it up here. Okay. That's pretty good. Alrighty. So now, what can we do with that? We could say, okay. If I was going 50 kilometers and I had an 85, and I was going 85 kilometers per hour, remember the, the units here, then how long would that take me? Okay, and let's see. And we can then see, was, is that going to be seven thirds of an hour? Almost certainly not, because otherwise we've, we've, we've just accidentally guessed the solution of the problem. But it still tells us kind of how to set things up. So what we do is we take that information, 85 kilometers per hour, that's the rate, times the time, is that equal to um, 50 kilometers. And you know what? If you do that, it's not. <laughs> it's not equal to 50 kilometers. But that is a model. And in fact, as I said, it's even better to go back a step and say, OK, is that a true fact? Nope. It's not true. If you actually plug it in your calculator, I'm not saying it's obvious, but just plug it in your calculator, it's not true. Um, but this is the kind of equation we actually are looking for. Okay. All we have to do now is say, okay, do, which of these were fake? Which of these did we put in? Hey, that 100, yeah, we put in that. All you have to do is take that number and put in a letter. Now this, the 7 thirds, that was actually a known quantity. And now the 50, I put that in, that was fake as well. So that's one of our equations. Now this was a false statement, because I just put in these fake numbers, and I guess, and they, 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 they weren't right. This is an, uh, something that may well turn out to be true if I, if I put in exactly the right P and D. And of course, that's what I'm trying to figure out. What are the right P and D that makes this true? Okay. So if you're really confident with these problems, you can kind of skip this. You definitely should skip this step of putting in the fake numbers. And you can go more directly to this, that this is a time, this is a rate, and this is a distance. Distance equals rate times time. But often, I find that when people are stuck with the letters, putting in numbers just kind of makes it just, an e just easy enough, just easier enough to, to, to make it easier. Now, the other going the other way, I'll do it quick because I want to this, finish this in 10 minutes. Going the other way, if you put in fake numbers and then try to figure out what's going on, you get, again, a distance equals rate times time. But now it's with the head, the tailwind, which is plus, and the shorter amount of time, seven fifths. That's two equations and two unknowns. 
which hopefully we can solve.